You know, fun little fact for all you dorks out there. When I was a kid, my favorite season of the year was the summer. For the simple fact that there was no school, I would play video games all day, I would wake up literally later than usual, no longer getting up early in the morning to go to school and deal with homework and shit like that. Also, the fact that I get to go out and play with my friend, go outside and play and get into a little trouble here and there. And also, me and my family will go out on family trips down to the shore and always just have a fun time. And again, also the fact that my birthday was also during the summer, so there's that too. But as I got older, I started to realize that summer can be very annoying with responsibilities being put on you. The humidity is a fucking pain in the ass. And I'm fully aware that there's people that live in different parts of the country, even the world for that matter, right? That also got to deal with humidity and it's annoying, what have you, right? Like I live in the Northeast. I can only imagine how crazy the humidity would be if I lived in Arizona. Or in a desert like New Mexico or shit like that. I can only imagine it. Or even hell, if I lived in Florida. Or in California. I can only imagine. And also, you know, again, like as you get older, I learned, I, as I got older, I learned to realize that, hey, my favorite season was not actually the summer, but instead the fall. Not because of pumpkin spice lattes or coffee or shit like that. But more for the fact that, you know what? The weather is beautiful in the fall. Yes, you get your, your hot weather. It's warm, if you will. Like in the morning, you get that chill breeze in the morning. And in the afternoon, it'll warm up. And then at night, it'll be chilly again. I would wear, in the fall, a hoodie and cargo shorts. It's hoodie season for me, that being in the fall. Don't judge me. I know, but it's weird, right? Who the fuck wears... Hoodies and cargo shorts together. It's weird, right? But hey, it is what it is. That's my style. That's how I roll. It is what it is. Especially now, what, what's going to go down this fall when it comes to pro wrestling? With AEW making their move to TNT on October 2nd. And now talks that NXT is likely moving to FS1. Come the fall as well. Ironically, on the same time slot from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And live. Like I said on FS1. And I know there's people out there that are saying it. Oh my God, this and that. But the quote Bobby Heenan. We are at war. <laughs> we are at war, ladies and gentlemen. Dorks and mother flowers. We are at war. All this and more on this installment of Around the Point SummerSlam Weekend Edition. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back just a bit. Around the Point. We are at war, you dorks. <laughs> what is up, you dorks and you mother flowers? It is I. It's Steve. I am the Dork Basher. And thank you all for tuning in to the SummerSlam Weekend Edition of Around the Point. I know we are hours away, we are literally hours away from NXT TakeOver Toronto going live on the WWE Network. WWE is going to kick off SummerSlam Weekend with NXT. And... I will likely be live later on tonight, or if not, I'll just do a regular review. I'm still in the bay of that, but likely I'll just do a review. But if you are new here to the podcast, thank you all for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. It would really mean a lot to me, believe it or not. Hit the bell icon, be notified whenever I upload a video, whenever I go live here on the channel. From time to time, I will go live. You can follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Hit the... Hit the uh, follow button. Also, if you want to interact with me on Twitter regarding Around the Point, it can be in the comment threads of this video, or if not, on Twitter, use the hashtag ATPoint so I know it's for the podcast. I want to give a big thank you to the homie himself, the best graphic designer in the entire IWC. That is 
Salrex. If you are a YouTuber, a podcaster, and you want awesome graphics and overlays done for your respective YouTube channel, look no further. Hit the man up on Twitter today. That is SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you, and he will do amazing stuff for your YouTube channel or your podcast, whatever you want, whether it's logos, overlays, graphics. And again, Salrex is responsible for not just the logo for around the point, but he's also responsible for the logo of the Team Heal podcast. So right there, you already know the guy does amazing stuff. And also, obviously, this overlay for around the point. So tell him that I sent you. And again, he's done amazing stuff, not just for me, but for the likes of JD from NY206. He's the host of Off the Script. Also, the Solo Monster, the host of the Solo Monster, Sounds Off, Big Mike from Big Mike Wrestling Recap Show, and as well as House of Glory. Speaking of House of Glory, let's get into this right now, because I know I'm going to get into NXT and AEW and all that stuff in just a little bit. But last night, on Friday, I attended House of Glory's High Intensity 8 as their big show of the summer, part of SummerSlam weekend, they had advertised the Young Bucks versus Private Party and the Young Bucks' final re- independent wrestling match, and as well as Private Party's final match with House of Glory before both House of before Private Party and the Young Bucks make the move to All Elite Wrestling as AEW is heading over to TNT come October the second. And nonetheless, I had a fun time. I met up with a couple of friends. I enjoyed myself. Good wrestling on a Friday night. Uh, the, the ride there was kind of annoying. The train ride and the subway and all this it was kind of a pain in the ass. But hey, this is what I'm accustomed to whenever I go to New York for a wrestling show. It comes with the, tw- it comes with the trade, if you will, right? But like I said, I had a fun time. Being in the building that literally yesterday at the NYC Arena, the Club Amasura, right? If you live in the, the Queens area, it was hot. It felt like I was in a giant sardine can, basically. A bunch of people just, again, it was standing sections only as well. And just, again, just hell of people. And you literally saw a sea of people wearing their AEW shirts, a sea of people wearing a Bullet Club, All Elite Wrestling, The Elite, the Young Bucks shirts, Kenny, you name it, they, they had it on, bro. And it reminded me, again, of what Cody Rhodes said in, on Busted Open Radio regarding them not trying to, again, attract the, the casuals, just their hardcore fan base that, again, are into this whole thing that they're sold on AEW, hook, line, and sinker. Bruh, I saw the quote-unquote power yesterday. It was cool and cringe all at once. I shit you not. A lot of people that were in the building, they were sold completely hook, line, and sinker with all Lee wrestling, and to each their own, okay? But what really caught my attention was the ending of the main event, right? My alarm just went off. It is what it is. But the conclusion of the main event of Private Party versus the Young Bucks, where at the end of the match, um, I guess the promoter of House of Glory came out, right, to basically, I guess it looked like to, again, give the fellow promo for Private Party, because again, Private Party um, was basically on, well, again, basically on their, on their way out, basically, right? So BXL, that's the guy that runs House of Glory, um, got out there and then delivered his promo, again, putting over Private Party, and then he's like, this is not all, this is, this is House of Fucking Glory, and he attacked the Young Bucks, and, and, and also uh, NYWK also got in there as well, and they attacked the Young Bucks and Private Party, guys came out to make the save, but eventually, Hangman Page came out. Keep this in mind, people were going crazy for, for, for Private Party and the Young Bucks. They were doing the elite chants and this and that and two-sweeting each other. But when, but when Hey Man Page came out, the entire building came out unglued. There was a lady behind me. I shit you not. She was standing behind me. 
And the moment Heyman comes out, Adam Page, holy shit, you would thought, you would have literally thought uh, this lady got a, had a fucking orgasm. She literally was about to have a fucking heart attack for Hangman Page. And again, it goes back to what I said. You know, Co talked about the power, right, of the of the AW fan base. I saw it in person, like I said. And overall, the at the end of the whole thing, Hangman Page cut this promo, calling out Jericho. And I get what they're trying to do, being that Jericho's facing Hangman Page or Adam Page at all out to crown the first AW World Champion. You want to give Adam Page the momentum. And here's the thing about it, okay? I said this not only on Around the Point, but also on the TML podcast. I think Adam Page is a good talent. But that being said, he can give you these good matches. But he's not somebody that I am cl- clamoring to see as the first AEW World Champion. No, I'm not. He's not someone that if you're if I'm starting a wrestling promotion with all the resources that's being given to me, Adam Page is not the guy that I'm putting the belt on to crown the first world champion. To me, he'll get there eventually, but it's not gonna be now. It's it's not now, people. I'm sorry. I hate to be the one to crush all the, the, the dreams of all the Adam Page fanboys and fangirls out there, but I'm just speaking facts. Good talent. It's just not his time right now. To me, when I look at him, he looks like a mid-carder. There's not a knock on him, though. It's not a fucking knock on him. It's not. That being said, again, it was cool. Awesome. People went crazy. The lady, like I said, that was behind me literally had a fucking orgasm when Adam Page came out. But nonetheless, too, what I also enjoyed, the fact that both JD from NY206 and the Solomon Monster were doing commentary for the show. And I think that's all. Awesome. I think it's awesome to see that a wrestling promotion are giving not only YouTubers but podcasters that we listen to on a weekly basis, what have you, the platform to call the action in the ring. I think that's awesome. And I've met both JD from NY206. I've met the Solomon Monster. I've spoke to both of those guys in the past. And they both come off as the most genuine people you will ever meet. I know people give JD a lot of shit at times. But when you meet him in person, you talk to him. The dude's a very cool, chill person to talk to. Believe me. And I'm not just saying that because, oh my god, we both have the same graphic designer. Not just myself, but also also Solid Monster and JD. But again, he comes off like a genuine person. He's awesome to talk to. Um, and again, I'm happy for him. I really, really am. And it's funny because AEW uploaded a video of what happened last night at House of Glory. And in the comment thread, people were just writing, sign JD the commentary. Sign him. And you know what? He, If there's anyone that deserves it, it's JD. Because if you watch his stuff in House of Glory, you can see the passion that he has for commentary. And it's there. And you know what? If it happens, it could have happened to a nicer person. He deserves it. He would deserve it no matter what. But again, I had a fun time at House of Glory. Awesome to see good wrestling on a, on a Friday night, the weekend of SummerSlam. And it was sold out, completely sold out. It's crazy to think, too, that on the other side, right, Ring of Honor, ROH, did a show in Toronto, Summer Supercard. The main event was the Briscoe versus G.O.D. in a ladder war match. And I've seen the photos of the venue and it was literally half empty. It's crazy to think that Ring of Honor's in Toronto for SummerSlam weekend and yet they couldn't fill up the venue. And they're in Toronto, it's SummerSlam weekend. You would think that hey, the fan base is there. They would leech off a WWE, you know, weekend special, right? And they could even sell out the venue. It's crazy. And to keep this in mind, Ring of Honor been to that venue in Toronto, numerous times in the past, and they've sold it out, and now they can't even sell it out. It's sad. It really, really is. The House of Glory did a show in New York, and I get it, it's the New York fan base. It's their, that's their home base. And they sold that the venue that I was in last night like I've never seen before. And good on them, and I hope more success for House of Glory. Uh, they're doing a show in October, Chapter 4. Uh, they're advertising Marty Skrull to be there. I will likely go to that show. 
I don't think he's wrestling on that show because on the poster they're advertising for a um a pre-show meetup, but they're not advertising that he'll be in a match. Maybe so. We'll see. Maybe him and Ken Broadway. Also, speaking of Ken Broadway, uh, he had an entrance by Uncle Murder. And DJ Drewski, you might see him on Hot 97. Um, funny little fact, I went to school with his sister. That being uh, DJ Drewski, uh, we were at, I, went, I went to school with his sister, middle school. So it's cool to see, again, another guy from the 908 having success as well. It's cool. It's awesome. But again, I had a fun time. If you guys, if you if you live in the New York area, if you have not been to House of Glory show before, what the fuck are you waiting for? Go. It's fun. It's awesome. You will not fucking regret it. I did not yet watch anything of season three of Glow. I know they came out season three literally yesterday. I have not watched it yet. I will probably watch it tomorrow. Also, speaking of tomorrow, being that it's SummerSlam tomorrow, I will we will be doing officially a Wrestle Companion. We will be live reacting to SummerSlam as it goes live here on YouTube.com. Myself, Big Mike, and maybe someone else. We'll see who else will join us, but we'll be doing a live reaction to SummerSlam tomorrow. So if you're not yet subbed to the channel, Dorf, what the fuck are you waiting for? Hit the sub button right now. Okay. So, as you guys know, AEW, All Elite Wrestling, is making the move officially to TNT to, de to debut their television, TV, basically, right? On October 2nd, on a Wednesday, on TNT. And people are excited. People, again, they want to see something different. And I'm all for that. Also, in the news came out that WWE, because you guys know, WWE has this new deal with Fox to have SmackDown Live on Fox. And part of the deal, there's been talks for a while that NXT might be moving to FS1 as part of the Fox deal. And there's people that are for it. There's people that are against it. There's people that are literally all over the place when it comes to this news, right? And apparently it was announced that it's indeed happening. They are moving to FS1 sometime in the fall. There's no date yet officially when it'll happen, but the talks is it'll be on FS1 from... On a Wednesday, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So basically, they are going head-to-head -head with AEW. AEW, again, they're moving their, they're going to have their show on TNT on Wednesday. Also, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. A part of me says that they will announce, that being WWE, they'll announce the, the move probably tonight at TakeOver. Then again, that was kind of soon. Triple H... Did a conference call. He does it for every takeover. And he talked about this and counter programming. Because people, can okay, think about it, right? People have this belief that, oh my God, WWE tried to counter program AEW, this and that. When you think about it, this is what Triple H said, basically, right? That Wednesday nights has always been their home. They've always been on a Wednesday, that being NXT on the WWE Network. And again, you can watch NXT on different ways on the WWE Network, whether it be on TV, on your computer, on your mobile device, on your PS4, what have you, right? And they've always been on a Wednesday night. But all of a sudden, oh, it's them kind of programming. It's them the one that are kind of programming. But when another promotion, right, another television show comes on, no one says anything about it. Which is kind of true. I know his response is kind of like, oh, you're whining a little bit. But it's kind of true. They've been on Wednesdays for a long time. Wednesday night has been their home, as far as I can remember. Been their day, I guess. Let's put it, let's put it that way, right? But now the talk is that NXT, once they made the move to FS1, there's no talk yet of whether or not will they move from full sale. I think they should. I think it's that time. I'm not saying a fucking arena, but... To venues where, again, it's small, it's intimate. But good thing about the full sale crowd, too. I feel like the full sale crowd, yeah, it's, it's awesome when you watch it. But at times, that fan base, those people in that building can be very annoying and cringeworthy. I shit you not. I shit you fucking not. So the idea of them moving to a different place week after week, cool, awesome. Apparently, like I said before, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., Two hours. Usually NXT, as we all know, is a one-hour show. The idea of them, again, doing an hour show, I've always enjoyed. I always said less is good. Now you're adding another hour. 
it's officially them being a brand. It's no longer them, oh my God, developmental, even though Triple H always said, NXT the third brand. And nine times out of ten, listen, a lot of people have done nothing but praise NXT. I know a lot of people who don't watch Raw, they don't watch SmackDown, but they'll watch NXT. I know a lot of people that have told me personally, yo, man, I've stopped watching Raw. I stopped watching SmackDown, but I watch NXT. They they know more about TakeOver than they do about SummerSlam. That's kind of, that's kind of crazy when you think about it, right? Speaking of which, um, if you dorks have not yet checked out, um, I did this literally this over this over the week. Uh, I did my predictions for TakeOver Toronto. If you have not checked that out, go give it a watch. Also, also you dorks, uh, episode three hundred and five of the Team Up podcast. Myself, Walter, and Big Mike, we did our prediction for SummerSlam. All that is in the video archives of this channel. Go give it a watch whenever you can. But the idea of it being two hours, that's kind of like, eh. Because you're taking away what made them good. Less is good. Good wrestling in an hour. A good show in an hour. It's not. It doesn't drag like it would with Raw or SmackDown. Because you know about when you watch Raw Mondays from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., once you're at the 10 p.m. time, you just want to turn it off. You want to go to sleep. Shit, I got work the next morning. Fuck, at 3 a.m. And then SmackDown is from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, two hours is fine. Fine. But then NXT, you're accustomed for being an hour. It's, again, you watch it. It's done. Understand what's going on. Awesome. They don't over bullshit with what they give you on NXT. They just put it out there, and it's done amazing. And now with another hour, you kind of question. At the same time, though, it gives fans, this is how I look at it too, it gives fans a choice now. What do you want to do? What's, what are you going to watch on thir- on Wednesday nights? Once again, NXT makes the move to FS1. Are you watching, are you watching AEW on, 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 a- on TNT and putting NXT on FS1 on DVR? Or vice versa. A part of me wants to believe too that NXT will also be on the network as a playback if you didn't watch it on on FS1. But again, this is the perk that that comes with Fox getting into into a deal with WWE. And I've always said, hey, you know, you put this on on a bigger on another platform, so be it. I'm all for them going to FS1. But what I'm not for, and it's been news happening as well, that Vince McMahon might be getting involved with NXT. Putting his input. Keep this in mind. For years, Vince McMahon has not even touched NXT. And not even touched NXT. But now all of a sudden, he wants to get involved. And that's where my issue is. Because we know whatever Vince touches, it turns to shit. It's like this fortune cookie, right? It's great, it's awesome, right? But once Vince touches it, it turns to shit. It turns to crap. And God forbid that happens. God forbid that does not happen. God forbid. Apparently, from what I'm hearing too, Vince wants to bring some of the main roster guys here and there to NXT. To counter-program AEW. So we were talking about maybe having on an episode of NXT, Roman Reigns show up. Or maybe even AJ Styles, maybe a Seth Rollins, maybe a Becky Lynch, maybe, I don't fucking know, an Andrade. Maybe just maybe a Charlotte Flair, a Bailey. I don't fucking know. A Brock Lesnar, can you imagine Brock in fucking NXT on a Wednesday night live? That'd be funny as hell. But you look at NXT, the talent that they have, and they have good talent. You have the likes of a Matt Riddle, an Adam Cole, a Johnny Gargano, who I know of tonight, Gargano and Cole are going to tear it up, a Velveteen Dream, Roderick Strong, uh, the list goes on, all right? Uh, Kushida, so many other talent, okay? Pete Dunne, who I think is officially part of NXT US, not no longer NXT UK. And you bring in these main roster guys to just take away the momentum of these guys that are NXT that have been busting their asses and shit, it's a kill. It's a kill. I think you let NXT do their own thing by themselves for two hours. Let them do their own thing. 
Don't bring the main roster guys and try to fuck shit up. You don't do that. You look at you look also on the AW side. AW got some good talent too. You have Kenny Omega. You have MJF. Joey Janela. Um, freaking Private Party. Private Party. The Young Bucks. Cody. Darby Allen. Sean Spears. The list goes on as well. Okay, with AEW and possibly the people that they might bring as well. Also, even John Moxley as well. So to keep that in mind. Okay. So again, it gives the wrestling fan a choice. What are you watching on a Wednesday night? I want to hear your thoughts on that, guys. Guys, give me your thoughts on possibly, again, you know, what are you going to be watching on Wednesday? Are you watching NXT? Are you watching AEW live? Which one are you watching live? Or if not, are you going to try to pull the simulcast trick? Two screens at the same time. At the same time, too, you know what's good about this? It gives the content creator, the podcaster, more things to review and talk about. So I think for wrestling fans as a whole, it's a win. Granted, this is not at the same level of a Monday Night War. I know a lot of people that will talk about the Monday Night War that won't even that weren't even around during the Monday Night War. I see, I, I've seen it. Oh yeah, yo, the Monday Night War is was the shit. It was awesome back in the day. WCW eighty three weeks or so beating the fuck out of WWE. And a lot of time, the people that are talking about this are the same ones that weren't even weren't even around during the night. They were born in 2000. They were born in 02. <laughs> it's funny as hell. It's so hilarious. At times, it's hilarious. But I get it. For them, this is, I guess, the closest thing they'll get to a Monday Night War. It's the Wednesday Night War. To quote Bobby Heenan, we are at war. Run for your lives. And I look forward to see what's going to happen. I'm down. I'm in. I wish both both shows the best. I know both shows will thrive, will kick ass, and will try to give you good wrestling. So I think at the end of the day, it's a win for everyone. Again, again, guys, give me your thoughts in the comment threads, or if not, let me know on Twitter your thoughts on this and what are you be watching live and all that stuff. Again, you can watch both. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong watching both at the end of the day. And I said this before. WWE, for all the talk of, oh my God, WWE feeling the AW effect, if they're going to respond, they're not going to respond with the main roster. They're going to respond with NXT. And look what we're having now. So let's see what happens. Let's all enjoy it, right? Also, what happened this week uh, regarding the people over at the NWA, Billy Corgan this week uploaded a video. It's on their YouTube channel talking about the NWA having their own television. That's right. It'll be on TV. Apparently, apparently per him, um, the talks is that they will be basically producing weekly wrestling TV series from Atlanta. It's going to happen soon, apparently, from Atlanta, Georgia. And likely the set of tapings will take place. On Monday, September 30th, and Tuesday, October the October the 1st. But my only thing is this with the NWA. And I don't mean to come off like a dick. I don't mean to come off like, how dare you say that? Because I get it. For a lot of fans, the NWA is tradition, right? Any fan of the old school will tell you the NWA, man, is tradition. It's the old school stuff. The territory day. There's fans, there are people that are still fans of that. I have friends that I work with that are up there in age, right? When you talk about wrestling, they know I'm a wrestling fan, right? I'll wear a wrestling shirt here and there, and they'll tell me about the good old days of Ric Flair and the Horseman and Dusty Rose and Harley Race, rest in peace. And they will say, that was wrestling back in the day, this and whatnot. And I tell them about the NWA and how it's back and how Billy Corgan has taken over and they'll watch it, and they're, and they're intrigued by it. The only problem is, I just feel like the NWA right now, it's not really a promotion. It's just a name. I mean, what's their roster right now? I mean, is it basically, this is the vibe that I get from it, okay? It's Nick Aldis, who's the world champion, the NWA champion. He's, cur- he's currently holding the 10 pounds of gold. You have James Storm as their national champion. You have, I guess, Brody King and 
Uh, PCL as the NWA Tag Team Champion. They, they won the Crockett Cup, so they gave those tag team titles, right? Sienna, who's the women's champion, who is barely even featured in NWA. Okay? And I guess you have also Josephus. I guess that, basically. And Eli Drake. And I know they have this thing with championship wrestling from Hollywood, but they need to sign people if you want to do a television show. Granted, will this be on TV? I doubt it. I think what's going to happen is they'll do shows, but they'll upload it to YouTube. I know MLW does that. MLW, they do their shows on being sports, and then they'll upload the episode to YouTube on Monday. They'll probably do that, if anything. But again, I wish them the best. I know a lot of fans that are interested in it. Honestly, if they do travel, if they do come to the New York, New Jersey area, I'll likely be, I'll likely give it a shot. I'll give it a watch, if you will. But guys, give me your thoughts on that. Your thoughts on the NWA making their move over to, to television. I know at one time they were partnered up with Ring of Honor and apparently they cut ties with Ring of Honor. I'll say this. I know it was talked about on Wrestling Soup this past Thursday with Anthony Missionary Thomas, John Draper, and Joe Numbers. The idea of the NWA partnering up with Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and even MLW. It could work. It's just that you have to be it'll have to just be one then. It'll no longer be at there'll no longer be an MLW or, or Impact Wrestling or Ring of Honor. It'll just be the NWA. It'll just be one. But nonetheless, guys, I welcome your thoughts on that too. Your thoughts on what do you see happening with the NWA and their television uh decision and stuff like that. I welcome your feedback. For a little fact, so I've been selected by EA to test out not just me but me and a bunch of other people to test out the beta of fifa 20 so currently i'm playing not now but these past couple of hours ago i've been playing the fifa 20 beta on my ps4 and i've been in this i've been talk. i've been thinking about this for a while now you know i've been someone that's been in support of fifa for so many years now right all the way from FIFA 06, I've been buying FIFA, 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 set, FIFA 07, FIFA 08, FIFA 09, FIFA 10, FIFA 11. I even bought FIFA, the World Cup for World Cup 2010, right? The World Cup edition. Uh, FIFA 11, FIFA 12, FIFA 13, FIFA 14, FIFA 15, FIFA 16, FIFA 17, FIFA 18, now FIFA 19. And I've enjoyed, granted, I don't do... Uh, the fantasy, the fantasy leagues and shit like that. I don't do any of that stuff. I just do. I just play the game. I'll do the career mode or the manager mode, if you will, and that's that. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This year, I am really interested in buying PES Pro Evolution Soccer from Konami PES 2020. And I know for a lot of people, PES gets a for a lot of people. There's a big knock on PES because they don't have the licenses. To all the teams, so they'll have to like for like the Premier League, right? Over the years, they'll do instead of Chelsea, they'll do London FC because they don't have the rights to have Chelsea in their game. For Manchester United, they'll do Man Red. For Manchester City's Man Blue, because again, at the time, they didn't have the licensing to a Manchester United or a Manchester City. And now it's crazy because again, I've seen people play PES. And I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I've seen, again, what's been going on. And PES is apparently the official partner, the global partner, that is, for Barcelona. And I've been been playing also the demo for PES 2020. And I got to tell you guys, and again, also the news that PES now has the rights to Juventus. They have the rights to, not the, the, the rights to Juventus, because apparently now on FIFA 20, you don't see Juventus. Now you see Piemonte Calcio. Which is basically their spin on Juventus because, again, FIFA lost the rights to Juventus. But also, PES has partnerships now with, well, licensing that is, right? With Manchester United, with Arsenal, with Bayern Munich. And again, and I'm playing PES, the graphics look amazing. It feels like I'm actually at a soccer game, basically. That's what it feels like. So, with that being said, again, FIFA 20 thus far, it's there. I, I just feel like I'm playing FIFA 19, honestly. I feels like I'm playing FIFA 19. That being said, I'm 
aiming more towards PES this year. PES 2020 than I am FIFA 20. Then again, I'm, I just might buy both. But other than that, I'm likely more, I'm leaning more forward towards, I'm leaning more forward towards PES 2020. Again, guys, if you're a soccer fan, give me your thoughts. Uh, if you've played PES or may play FIFA, because again, I feel like there's like this, like, there's like this, 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 there's this divide. There's FIFA fan and then there's PES fans. Oh, if you're a PES fan, you can't play FIFA. If you play FIFA, you can't play PES. Oh, fuck PES, fuck FIFA, fuck all that shit. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy both. But again, you know, I'm looking more forward to PES 2020 than I am FIFA 20, if you will. Before I wrap this up, I want to give my quick thoughts on what's been going on with the G1. Now, granted, I haven't really been watching every single match. Like, the last thing that I saw was John Moxley versus Naito. And I know that today, we had the finale of the A block. It was, it was uh, Kota Ibushi versus Kazushika Okada. I know that Kota Ibushi won his match, and now he is going on to the finale to meet the winner of the B block. Likely, that will be between Juice Robinson and John Moxley. A uh, part of me says that will be Juice. I don't really see Moxley winning. Because, again, with the whole AEW thing, I mean, maybe just maybe Moxley does win. And then you see at the finale being Moxley versus Kota Ibushi, which would be a fucking amazing match. But I see Kota Ibushi winning the whole thing and going on to Wrestle Kingdom to face Okada and having this crazy-ass match. That being said, though, I'm looking at John Moxley in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I can just tell the following. Dude's having fun. He's enjoying himself. And I know that's going to come to an end. He's going to be in, in, in all elite wrestling once they make the move to TNT. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. A part of me wishes, and this is just me, of course, that when Moxie left WWE, that he really didn't commit to another long-term contract, this time with AEW. I feel like he shot himself in the foot on that one. But that's just me. Okay, because you look at Moxie in New Japan, you can tell he's honestly, genuinely having fun. He's tearing it up, having these great matches, being booked like this fucking big deal. And people are eating it up in Japan. So that's just me, of course, on that. Before I wrap this up, let's talk about Fight TV. So, again, this is where I talk about the internet wrestling community being in this crybaby mode, the soy boy community, right? So... This past Thursday, it was a rumor going around that WWE had been thinking about purchasing Fight TV. Now, in case you guys don't know, Fight TV is a streaming service that does streamings for pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and kickboxing. They've, they've basically streamed the events for New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, MLW, also all elite wrestling, right? And when the news came out, that the rumor basically, right, oh, that WWE might be buying Fight TV or they're interested in purchasing Fight, oh my god, the, the community lost their shit. Fight TV, you better not do it. And again, I speak three languages. I speak English, I speak Spanish, and I speak dork. And all the nerds were like, you better not fucking do it, Fight TV. Wah, you better not say no, say no. If you will. And it looks like Fight TV shot that down. And again, everyone bitches and complains for no reason. All that for no reason. So apparently a fan asked on Twitter about this. And Fight TV responded. And it's the following in quote. Hello, these rumors are not these rumors are not true. We are not in merger and acquisition discussions with WWE. We constantly appreciate all of your support and passionate comments. That's what they wrote in response to the fan comments. So again, all the dorks out there, all the cry babies cried and moaned for no fucking reason whatsoever. So there's that. At the same time, I said this before, I'll say it again. A part of me wishes, again, maybe it's a contract thing, it's the deal that they've made with Fight TV. But you know that Ring of Honor has their own streaming service with Honor Club, and Impact Wrestling has Impact Plus. That they start streaming their pay-per-views 
on their streaming services and shit. And now I have to make fans pay a shitload of money on Fight TV to watch the shows. If you're already paying money, you're forking over money for that for those respective streaming services. But I think again, Fight TV is a great platform for smaller companies or smaller promotions that is, right? To have have them air their shows on. Like a GCW or a House of Glory and so on and so forth, okay? That being said. But we'll see what happens. I, I again they shut it down, but who knows really, right? That being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, again, dorks, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell icon, be notified when I upload a video, whenever I go live and all that fun stuff. I will be back later on tonight for my NXT review, my NXT TakeOver Toronto review. If you have not yet checked out, I did a predictions this past week on TakeOver Toronto. It's in the video archives of the channel. Also... Myself, Big Mike, and Walter went live this past Thursday for episode 305 of the Team Heal podcast. We gave our predictions for SummerSlam and what's likely to go down. I said this early on in the podcast that this Sunday we will be doing another installment of Wrestle Companion. We will be doing a live reaction to SummerSlam. God help us all. Seriously. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Use the hashtag ATPoint so I know if you talk to me on Twitter about this episode, it's for this episode in general. Also, guys, big thank you to the homie himself, Salrek, for the awesome overlay that you see here. If you are a YouTuber, you're a podcaster, and you want awesome graphics, overlays, and logos done for your channel, your podcast, or just awesome graphics, period, or awesome overlay like you see for Around the Point, hi there. Hit them up on Twitter at SRXGFX. Tell them that I sent you. He also done graphic designs, not just for me, but for JD from NY206, The Solid Monster Sounds Off, House of Glory, Big Mike, and so many other people as well. And that being said, you dorks, I am out like Janet's titties. Hate, comment, and subscribe. But more importantly, this has been another installment of Around the Point. Enjoy TakeOver tonight. And enjoy SummerSlam tomorrow, dorks. You dorks. Go bite the weenie. Dorks. <laughs>